Yeah, it's a very challenging time. It's really, everything is turned on its head. Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking mostly with my mask on, and that's just because now that is a requirement for us in the hospital to have our masks on 100% of the time. So I apologize for the muffled voice, and if you have any questions about what I'm saying in the video, just leave them in the comments and I will definitely answer them. Enjoy! So everything is turned upside down. Everyone is doing the best they can in their new assignment. A lot of the anesthesiologists are in the ICUs. They're not in the ORs doing any type of procedure at all at this point. There's only a few emergency cases that go per day. So we're all trying to make everything work and fill all of the holes that need to be filled and care for the patients the best we can. Yeah, it's a very challenging time. It's really, everything is turned on its head. <laughs> we do have to wear our N95s and masks to cover all day, every day while in the hospital and also eye covering goggles or a shield. So I'm heading to go see a patient in our new ICUs. We actually converted our whole ambulatory hospital to ICUs. So, and before the patient has an emergency procedure, I have to see them at the bedside. That's what I'm heading. Since we're trying to conserve our equipment and it's you know really short supply you won't see me putting it on or demonstrating it in this video because again we're just trying our best not to use anything when it's not necessary because we don't know when we're going to get another set of those items so this is you know really pretty much the time of use and conservation and reuse if possible, which is what we're doing with our N95 masks. So we're using them as frequently as we can before they become soiled. If they become soiled or we're doing any type of intubation or any airway intervention that will cause aerosols or little droplets from the airway to be released, then we will have to remove those, discard them, and replace them with a new mask. Today I'm holding the airway pager and that's basically an exclusive pager for intubations or problems with someone who's already intubated if their tube needs to be adjusted. So I will respond to those calls and any other um, problems with the patient breathing, they will call us so they'll page that intubation pager. So that'll be nurses on the floor or in the ICU, residents or anyone who's taking care of the patient will be able to contact us so that we can come quickly and intervene. But that being said, as soon as we arrive, we're supposed to be protecting ourselves, of course. So we're putting on our protective equipment, as you've heard about many times, I'm sure, on the news and etc. different outlets. And um, personal protective equipment is in short supply. We're just being very strategic about using it. You know, if I go to, I get called for an intubation, and um, they decide the patient doesn't need to be intubated or like on my assessment, um, you know, there are all their alternatives to intubation and I can suggest them, you know, to be used safely, then I will not intubate. So, you know, that sometimes that decision is made after I've already put on all of my personal protective equipment and before I go into the patient room. So um, in that case, we're trying to preserve that you know, even though it's opened, it's not yet contaminated. So we'll try to use that stuff if we can again. <sighs> So there's some steps for putting on personal protective equipment as outlined by the CDC. So it's basically telling you the way to put on your gown, mask, gloves, and face shield and still reduce the risk of contamination when you're removing them as well. So that's another part of it. So you can put on the equipment 
and then take it off incorrectly and still self-contaminate. So it's really important for us to have this knowledge and also abide by the recommended steps on how to remove the equipment so that we don't get ourselves infected during that part of the process. So it's quite labor intensive and time consuming as well. And all these patients, you know, really need us to respond in the fastest way we can. So that's another challenge to it. So getting all your stuff on, making sure you're protected and then responding quickly. It's really, really challenging. Today was a pretty busy day. I've been responding to call after call after call for intubations or even in patients who are already intubated to fix any issues with their breathing tube. So sometimes the tube gets knocked out of position and then we'll have to just adjust that. So it's an additional step in intervention that puts us at risk every time we manipulate the airway or go in to adjust the breathing tube or place one, we're at risk for getting infected by the release of droplets or aerosols from the airway. So that's an additional level of challenge. So we don't just put the breathing tube in and leave. If there are issues, we get called back. That makes it really, really hard, hard to stay on top of things. 